Hello, I'm Paul Larson. An author and illustrator from Elizabethtown, New York, has kissed bears and snuggled up to skunks. In this author visit, Sherry Amzell discusses how she's turned her passion for nature into books aimed at enthusing others about wildlife. Kids from all over the North Country know you for your books and your illustrations, and you're reaching them at a very young age with books like this one, The Adirondack Alphabet. What's the purpose of this book? Well, the Adirondack Alphabet specifically is to get kids learning their alphabet, but also familiarize them with Adirondack animals and places. We have integrated mountains and locations in the Adirondacks, and they just go through and kind of get used to seeing them and learn how to spell the words. Will you please read a little bit from this? Sure. Um, a for Adirondacks, a North Country home. B is for Black Bear with mountains to roam. C is for Chickadee eating pine seeds. D is for dragonfly and pickerel weeds. E is for eagle fishing for bass. F is for fox hunting mice in tall grass. Now this works on so many different levels because it also works as a vocabulary building tool because I see words that I might not have known when I was little like Bobo Link right. and and you have locations like Big Slide Mountain and words like beaver, and we can actually see a very detailed drawing of a beaver. Where did you learn to draw in such a detailed fashion? Well, I've always been an animal drawer as such, but then I went on to get a master's in biomedical illustration, so I actually um, illustrate a very detailed, realistic illustrations, and it works well for wildlife. The details is really pen and ink, the style that I use, is really shows the fine lines, works well for fur. What got you interested in creating books? Well, I, I've always wanted to illustrate different projects, especially things related to animals, and I developed a project to illustrate Habitats of the World and kind of sketched out what I wanted the books to say, and the agent that I was working with at the time said, you know, your writing is really good, I don't think we need to search for an author, you should try your hand at this yourself, and I wrote this series, and they did really well, and I've just taken, gone on from there to do many more. How did the book Wetland Walk come about? Wetland Walk was very unexpected, actually. I was at a conference at Vassar College for children's book authors and illustrators, and I was sitting in one of their little teeny dorm rooms thinking about what I wanted to illustrate and what I wanted to write about, and this verse kind of just came out of my head, and I wrote it down in maybe 10, 15 minutes, and it was one of the first books I sold on my own. Um, it captured the imagination of Millbrook Press, and they um, contracted it, so there, there it went. So it's in verse. What happens in the book? It's a rhyming verse about a little boy who walks through a wetland and the things he sees and um, you know the places he goes in the wetland and shows some of the close-ups of what he might see when he walked through there. And of course, I use my son as the model for the little boy. Oh, that's your son in there. Yes, the little redhead. Let's hear a bit from this book, Wetland Walk. And sure. I noticed that the pictures are all in beautiful color. Yeah. Once I spent a day outside to wander through a marshy tide. Flowers grow on the water's edge, a pickerel weed, a grassy sedge. A dragonfly on sparkling wings whizzes by, his body sings. A frog dives, leaving silver rings. A tadpole swims, a peeper sings. An osprey, its prey in sight. A fish in claws, its meal that night. What fascinates you about animals? Well, uh, animals are amazing and diverse. They're very different from us, but they also do the same things. They're out there finding food and homes, and, and they just are so unexpected and so amazing. And um, I really do love everything animal. You know, some people like football. I like animals. And um, my brother is a zoo veterinarian, and he works with a lot of exotic animals. And I, when I need pictures for my books, I'll go to wherever he's working and photograph from the animals that he has, and he lets me get in real close and take some great pictures. You take pictures of these animals, and they wind up as inspiration for your actual drawings? That's right, or if I need an actual reference of an animal, I'll go and take pictures uh, and turn them into the drawings back in my studio. I went with my brother to a bear preserve in Southern California, and we visited with a couple of his patients, grizzlies and black bears, 
and he asked if I wanted some pictures with a black bear. We couldn't go in with the grizzlies, they're too dangerous, but the black bear had just filmed a movie, and so he was pretty well trained and very safe, and so I went in with a bear, not realizing that their sense of smell is so acute that they really respond to smells, and I had washed my hair with some apple-flavored shampoo, and the bear sat next to me for the first picture, and then he had his nose kind of near my hair in the second picture, and the third picture, he was right up in my face. It was pretty funny. Uh, another thing that happened while we were visiting the bears was as we were leaving the preserve, this giant Kodiak grizzly, about 1,400 pounds, came running down the hill. And there was a big electric fence there, and there are hot wire trains, so they don't really go near them. But I asked the trainer, why is that bear following us down the hill? And she said, you know, he gets a little bit jealous when you interact with the other bears. He just kind of wants to, to nudge you and smell you and kiss you goodbye. And so I said, okay, I'm game. And she said, just put your hands behind your back and lean over the electric fence and he'll give you a little kiss. Well, I, of course, did what I was told. And instead of kissing me as such, he licked my face with a giant tongue. And it's pretty, it was pretty funny. Now, not every book you write is just for little kids. This is a very informative book called The Adirondack Nature Guide. Who's the target audience for this? That's for the amateur naturalists, which can be anyone from an adult to, you know, young readers. Um, I do have a lot of young kids that buy the book because they can find the animals right out in their yards and the plants. But a lot of people come up to the Adirondacks and they want to see a lot of things and they don't want to buy a guide for one or the other. And this has a bunch of different kinds of things, birds, mammals and such. Well, so many kids in this region know who you are because you go and visit schools. That's right. What do you do in the schools? Well, when I visit the schools, I do a slide program about habitats, sometimes about the Adirondacks or sometimes habitats throughout the world, including rainforests and deserts and mountains and grasslands. And then I actually go into the classroom and teach them how to draw animals and habitats. And you don't just limit yourself to activities inside the school, is that correct? No, no, we go out on their nature trails and schools actually come here to visit nature trails in the Champlain Valley. What an educational experience. Yes, so one of the things I discovered in taking them outdoors especially is that a lot of the kids who grow up in the Adirondack region and have all these resources at their fingertips have actually never climbed a mountain and have not really spent much time outdoors. And so they actually don't even know a lot of the things you would expect them to know about the outdoors because they live here. And so it's a great experience to get them out and have them see what's out there. And They often say, can I bring my parents back and show them? And I'm like, yeah, this is great. So you're really opening the eyes of these young people. It's true, and, and when I think about the fact that I see about you know, 600 children per school, 20 per year, it has a, a great, hopefully, um, long-lasting effect, so that's a good thing. Well, how do you enjoy being able to reach kids with your knowledge and with your illustrations and your instructional abilities? It's a wonderful experience and kids are so open to learning new things and they love it when they can answer questions and they know the information and they also are so funny about what they think they know and it's just a, it's a fun experience in general. Author Visits is a production of Mountain Lake PBS. For more information about the authors and their books, head to our website, mountainlake.org.